Yeah, Alan, Adam Stump brought him tonight to see it. Yeah. And uh, what about Sister Jules? Just me? I went down there in 40 hours and I said she's Tuesday Jules. Okay. We need to remember Sister Jules tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to remember Tisha and Jamie, mm -hmm. April, Michael, and Mikey, mm -hmm. and Amy and Cal. Trisha, I'm going to go with Tyler. 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 You may remember Jennifer, Jennifer dead. Is that who you see? Okay, I'm not sure. <laughs> I seem to say something. I just I couldn't hear you. Let's keep praying for circulation in my grandfather's life. Yes, amen. Mm -hmm. And we need to remember Sister Russell. We need to remember Brother Creamer, Sister Mary. And Johnny and Ginger's husband. Yep, Johnny and Sister Ginger. And her mom. Yeah. Uh, Ginger, Ginger's mom. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, man, anybody else? Who do I forget? Who do I miss? Brother Dan. Yeah. Um, my grandma was Michael's mom. Yeah. Uh, with my pump, the only thing they are waiting on is the prescription from the doctor. So let's just pray that the doctor will get this sent through because I need that pump. Everything's been approved. Instead of $3,200, it's going to cost me $100. Amen. So I need the pump. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That needs to happen in the name of Jesus. Yeah. 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 Any others? Any unspoken requests tonight? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let's stand. Let's take these needs to the Lord. Lord, we love you. Thank we know you. that you are Lord. so very careful, Lord. Lord. Each and every thing that's been asked tonight, every problem, every situation, Lord, we know that you're more than able. We know you're here, we know you are, that you have it all in your hand. Lord, we wish you in this tonight, Lord. We ask you to just touch, to move, Lord, to guide, direct, whatever it may be, Lord. I pray now that you'll just bless your people, that you'll bless the Lord with healing, that you'll bless the Lord in their finances, that you'll bless the Lord in their safety. Lord, whatever it may be, we ask you tonight, Lord, and we, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise for everything that is about to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. While you're standing, turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter number 28. I'm going to look there at verses 1 through 6. Did you say that then somebody was picking on me? Acts 28. As long as they keep picking on me, I'll, I'll keep repeating it several times every time. You enjoy it. Yeah. Acts 28, verse number 1. picking on you to give me a And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Malita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. He, took, he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. In the same quarters were possession of the chief man of the island whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius laid sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hand on him and healed him. And so when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed. Amen. Amen. Now I'll talk to us just a few minutes.
on this subject. From a wreck to a blessing. Oh, that's good. To a blessing. Lord, please bless us. Let us receive your word, Lord. Speak to us tonight. We bless pray. Tonight. Lord, I offer myself up to you. Just use me, Lord, as you will. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. We receive it. Thank you for standing. Hallelujah. As we know here, this, I know we're all familiar with this story. Uh, Paul has been on ship and it's been tossed to and fro. And they've uh, ended up, it's crashed and tore all pieces because they were in a storm. Right. They were in a very strong storm. Actually, they called that storm Eurachlodon. Yep. Eurachlodon was a whirlwind type of storm, which actually, depending on how they looked at that back then, it could have been like a tornado type of a deal. Or it could have actually been a small hurricane because, you know, hurricanes rotate too. They just do it in a bigger, wider pattern than a tornado does. But needless to say, there was 276 people on that boat. And they just fixed to jump off that thing and leave, if you remember. Right. And But Paul had got a word from the Lord. And they appeared unto him and said, be calm, don't worry about it. As long as everybody stays on the boat, everybody will leave. Right. And he said, all right. He, so he told him, he said, look, don't y'all jump off here. Just hang on. Mm -hmm. God's going to bring us through this and we're going to come out and we're all going to live. Now, how many out of them 276 you think are going to swim a lick? Yeah, probably about 250 of them. They were probably a bunch of them good swim. And they still made it up. Well, they landed there on the island of Malika, which is funny that my wife asked me just yesterday, I think it was. She said, what, where is Malta? That's Malta. The island of Malika is now known as Malta. It's actually between Sicily and, uh, uh, I can't remember. Uh, yeah, there you go. I believe it is. I believe it's that's what I mean anyway. This is very slow. I can't remember anyway. It's out there. Yeah, yeah. It's over in the overseas somewhere. It was over on the ball, right? That's what it was. They ended up on there, of course, we read here. Uh, he said that, that uh, the folks there was the barbarous people and barbarians, they were saying. But they were nice with them. Right. Yeah. Because then, you know, they come out and they built them up fire. And it was cold. It was one time. And they built that fire up and helped them dry off, helped them get a little heat. But did you notice what Paul did? Paul started serving. Yeah. We started going and helping get wood and stoking the fire up, you know. And uh, I've heard a lot of different folks say that was why that this snake come out and did it. Was because we went to go get the sticks and get the things, you know, to throw on the fire. Man, if it's cold, a snake, when he's cold, cannot really move. No. They, they get very slow, depending on how cold. Uh, they get very slow and sluggish and they can't bite you like they normally could. They can't react quite the same. So they say, a lot of folks say, he picked up the snake and the sticks while he was picking up sticks. Well, needless to say, when he threw him in the fire, he got reactivated. He got alive. Yeah. So then when he went back to throw some more in there, he come out and lashed on his hand. And in the process of that, most folks would have died from the snake bite because they know it was everything. It was yeah. just like they fell over dead right there from heart attack. That's what I'm saying. They died not from the snake bite, but from the fact that the snake bite. Yeah. Yeah. But what did Paul do? He just shook it off me. He shook that thing off over in the fire and went on about his business. 
is a little close and oh yeah, that's what I thought. And this old boy said, he must be some kind of a robber, a bad man. He's some kind of a dare, some kind. Because now he got been through the storm, got his boat wrecked, had to swim for the or float or whatever that is, to yeah. get on the shore. Said the storm tried to take him but didn't make it. Now the snake's gonna get him. <laughs> and they sitting there watching. I can just see him sitting around that campfire watching. He's going to fall over. Man, y'all watch that hand be swelling up. He'll fall over dead in a few minutes. And he just went on and kept about his business. Nothing happened. God had a plan for Paul. That's right. They said, ooh, he must be a dog. Yeah. Ain't nothing happening to him. He must be a dog. <laughs> but then they... <laughs> they found out later that he wasn't a God, but he knew one. Amen. He knew the one. Yes, he knew the one and only God. And he knew who could bring him out of the storm like this. Amen. And he brought him out of the storm, and I'm sure Paul's thinking, boy, this is a rough time. The angel said we live, we live, but all this stuff keeps happening. Why am I here? Have you ever been in that moment? Where you think, boy, everything's coming down around my ears. Everything I do seems like it's getting turned upside down and just washed over or whatever. Yep, right. Why am I here, Lord? What are you doing? Yeah. You remember I'm still here? All right. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. Man. No. And in the process of that, we still were sitting there thinking, I know God said He'll never leave me nor forsake me. I know that the, you know that there's a lot of evidence saying that. That, that I'm by myself. Right. But now Paul said, I still know who my God is. Amen. And in the process of this, when uh, Publius, the man there, which the word said uh, in verse number 8, it said that there were that the same quarters where possession of the chief man was out. That means in the same region. He had a house. He had, he had an estate. He had a place where he lived. And his name was Publius. Now Publius was, he, I'm sure he was probably kind of moved in what had been happening in Paul's life. Uh -huh. And then all of a sudden, he said, you know what? He said, my daddy's sick. He's got some stuff going on with the doctors. I'm sure he said the doctors ain't been able to help. Because this man was the leader. He was the ruler of these people. He had access to whatever. But even though with all his power and everything that he had, all of his wealth and whatever else, he still could not get his daddy healed. So when he seen all that's happened and heard all that's happened with Paul, he said he knows somebody or he knows something that can help my daddy. Right. And he got Paul to come and pray for his daddy. What did the Bible say? He was healed. Yeah. And then from that, they called more people in that had ailments and infirmities. And what happened? They were healed also. That's right. That's right. So what, what's happening now is Paul has went from a storm to a blessing. Right. Amen. He went from a deadly situation that didn't look real hopeful right. to being right. lively by God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, huh? That was a promise that everyone would live. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but you know what? And I thought about that. I said, you know what? That's, that's good that he held on to that. And I thought, well, wait a minute. That's the only promise that he did to the show. He said that they would be saved if they stayed on the boat, that all would be saved. Uh, he didn't give him a promise past the shore. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. What carried him past the shore? No. His knowledge of who, he, who his master was, right. who his Amen. God was, That's That's right. who his Amen. healer was, Amen. who he worked through him and he worked through. Amen. Amen. We've got to make sure in ourselves, folks, that we don't just get caught up in the storm. Right. 
That's right. We, we can't just look at the things that are going on in the storm because the storm is taking us somewhere. Amen. The storm, the storm is taking us somewhere that we must go because we don't know who's there. We don't know who, who's laying over there at the end. We don't know whose life we're going to affect. Right. But God's bringing us into a place and into a time that we're going to be used of Him if we'll just believe Him and stay with Him and, and, and just love Him and, <laughs> and yeah. say, you know, though He's me, yeah. yet, yeah. Uh, Amen. yet will I follow Him, yet will I love Him, yet will I praise Him, yet will I live for Him. Amen. Yeah. Yet will I profess His name. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Because He knows. We, sometimes you've got to go through the storm if you're ever going to get under that clear sailing dome. That's right. That's right. Sometimes the storm is not for our trial. <coughs> I don't believe God put Paul in this storm for him to be in a trial. I think he put the storm there so he could get Paul where he needed to be. That's right. So God could work through him. All right. That's right. But if Paul had not had faith, he'd never made it off the book. Not alive. That's right. That's right. If he'd have been like a lot of time like I do, that's you, Lord. It looks pretty bad out here. You sure I don't need to jump off this thing? We're headed for some big rocks out there. Right. I know this fish carries boat all pieces. Right. I think I'd be better to just jump on in and swim. <laughs> huh? Mm -hmm. We've got to be careful that we just, we don't, <laughs> Ooh, glory. that we don't just jump off and strike off on our own. That's right. That's when we'll get in trouble. Huh? That's when we'll get in trouble. Yeah. yeah. Well, and besides that, besides that, we're not going with God's same things. <coughs> God's goal was for Paul to end up at Publius's father's. Yeah. He, he wanted him to end up there so that he could be a blessing to all those people. That's right. All those who got healed. He don't tell us how many got saved out of that. He don't tell us if there was, you know, if there was a great revival in the land after all those got healed. I would have tell us that. Amen. I can imagine that there was a, a lot of talk, don't you know? Amen. I can imagine there was a lot that went on. And why was it? It was all because Paul was obedient and faithful. And he said, I'm going to ride this out. No matter where God takes me, I'm just going to go with him. That's right. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lose my mind. I'm not going to lose my direction and say, well, this is far enough now. I've done been through all this before I ever got to the storm. Now I'm in the storm. Next thing you know, I'm getting shit raped. Yeah. Then I got a snake hanging off my hand. Right, right. These folks are thinking bad of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about it though. Paul was on the ship. He was in prison. Yeah. He had other prisoners. There was a whole bunch of Roman soldiers. Yeah. yeah. But all of them, 270 what? 276. 276 people listened to one lowly prisoner. Yeah. So how much authority did God give the man? To have a whole ship full of dying people by the history. And him a prison. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not a authority that's wrote down on paper. That's not a authority that you just say, I'm lost down here. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. That's a sense authority. Mm -hmm. Amen. They have faith in him when he said that. Yeah. Because they didn't want that either, so they thought this is better than exactly. what our options are. That's right. Exactly. Well, if you remember, they were fasting too. Remember that? Yeah. The folks on the boat were fasting. 
So God, in in that, they were looking for an answer from God. God said, there he is. He's got the answer. This is what he said. Yeah. Yeah. The whole, you know. Huh? Yeah, they threw all the ones that they threw all the stuff out of ship. They yeah. threw away all the food. But they threw away the cargo. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, bro. The Bible says that they were fast. Yeah, they were fast. It says they, they were fast. Because Paul told them after he talked to the angel, he said, Look, y'all, come on, take some meat for your strength. So they were they were sensitive to what was going on. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I've always wondered, I thought, what if somebody would get off and the rest of them would die? Praise God, no good. Yeah. But you figure 276 people, somebody's going to be a renegade in the bunch. Somebody's going to say, uh-uh, see y'all. You know? I think I'll take my chances. Yeah, I know I will. Tell them. Praise the Lord. I hope I don't ever have to make that decision. I don't want to be in the rock for long. That's why I live in Tennessee. The rock for long, long way from here. We get them. Uh, the ones that ain't, ain't got no water involved, we just get to throw around That's right. Or a little bit of water, not much. <laughs> but anyway, we're always wanting our blessings. We're always looking for God's blessings to fall upon us. But sometimes those blessings are not going to come until there's a storm. Until there's a time when we just got to say, no, we're slain. I'm still going to keep trusting. I'm just going to hang in there. I'm going to hold on. Amen. I'm not going to back up. I'm not going not to slide that way. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I've got to, I've got to keep on going. But our blessings, our blessings, folks, most of the blessings that we get from God are going to come from our faith. Yeah. Because He's going to have something. You're not just, most of the time, the Lord's not just going to walk up and hand you a blessing out of the blue without putting you through something first. Because that's how He grows us. Yeah. That's how He grows us. Mm -hmm. Most of us are not going to just walk up and do it. out of nowhere and hand our kids. Gifts and say, here you go. Because most of us don't have that kind of money to throw away one day. That's right. But we don't mind saying, well, I'll get you that if you, you know, you'll do this or you'll do that. Right. That's kind of what the Lord does with us too. He says, if you're willing to do what I ask you to do, uh -huh. then I've got blessings at the end of it. Yeah. So we don't get so big headed and thinking we deserve something. Or, yeah. Right. It's yeah. his way of making us trust him. Amen. Amen. Always, I never think about a storm unless I think about Peter. But I also think about the first time the Lord was asleep in the bottom of the boat and the storm came up. You remember he came up and they said, Oh, we're going to pray. You let her sleep and we're just going to die. He says, Oh, you little faith. Walked up and says, Be still. Be still. And they, you know, they were still. And I, there again, I mean, it doesn't say it, but I can see it in my mind. The Lord walked up and said, Oh, you little faith. Be still. Now I'm going back to bed. Uh, yeah, I'm going back downstairs. Y'all could have done this yourself. I'm going back downstairs. Because he said, if you speak to this mountain, if you speak to a mountain, it'll be removed. You can speak to a wind, and it'll be still, too. Uh, that's right. But then I always think about Peter, because Peter was in that storm. They were all there, and here comes the Lord walking on the water. And Peter said, that's you, Lord, without it. You know, that's you, Lord. He said, yeah, it's, it's me. You know, I'm up here. 
And Peter said, can I come to you? Sure, come on. The Lord is looking for us to walk out in the storm. That's right. And he's going to keep us through. That's right. But like Peter, when he looked off from where the Savior was, Started he started looking at the storm, looking at everything going on around him. He started getting swelled up in the storm. He swallowed up. <coughs> and it took him getting his focus back on Jesus for Jesus to be able to pull him back out. Not 
of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That really ties right back in, and I didn't realize it. That really ties right in with what I was just teaching, preaching, whatever you want to call that. But here's the thing. I try my best to learn from my mistakes, and I try it any time that I'm careful. I try my best to, to take that go. Uh, because I don't know near what I want to know. And I want God to keep revealing to me different things as I study and read the Word. I want, I want that to be made clear. So as I was reading this, has anybody, I don't know how y'all do, but whenever I pray, and I, especially if I'm repenting, I always pray, verse number 16. I pray, Lord, please forgive me for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and my lust for the pride of life. And I always pray that. But I will be honest, I never really understood exactly what the pride of life was until I read this the other day, a couple days ago. And I got to reading and looking and digging a little bit. And I know it, it might seem like I've jumped off the world of that, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting back here. Because you asked me about this this morning. The flesh there, the lust of the flesh. We know what that is, right? That's, that's craving sensual gratification. That's pretty easy. We always know what that means. The lust of the eye. Now that, a lot of us, we think that goes and ties right back in this, but actually it's not so much that. The lust of the eye is actually when we are, we're, we're looking with a greedy eye about something. Boy, I'd like to have that. Right. I want that. I need that. It's a point of possession. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's covetousness. Is what it is, it will yeah. down to being covetous. Cut. I need to be looking at it. Covetous. That's, that's what the lust of the eyes is. But now the pride of life. Does anybody know what the pride of life is? Don't get my jump. Better than that. Huh? Better than that. Yeah. No. Well, somewhat. Pride of life is assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things. Iniquity. Iniquity. That's exactly what it is. Iniquity. That's exactly what it is. Because it's more or less, and I, and I have been praying, I've told you this before, I think, I'm pretty sure, I pray a prayer every day, and, and I pray for the church, for my family, the church family, the school family, and for our mind, our health, our finances, and our resources. Oh, and as soon as I read that, I said, well, wow, Lord, I've been praying wrong. Yeah. I've been praying for him to cover our resources. He's our resource. Right. I was praying wrong in that. The pride of life showed me after I understood this. That's why we got to dig into the Word. When I understood this, I said, no, Lord, I was praying wrong. I was praying for you to protect my resources. Yeah. You're my resource. Yeah. <laughs> so what's our resource? <coughs> our job. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Our, our ability to be able to, to make a living on our own. Right. Right. Or to provide by ourselves. And God said, that's not what I want you to do. I want you to understand that I am the way. That I am the provider. That I am the one that brings you your money. That I am the one that lets you be able to get up in the morning and go to that job. That I'm the one that gives you the mental capability to be able to perform that thing. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 He's our resource. We we a lot of times, if we're not careful, we'll think, well, I've done. I'm, I'm, you know. Or well, I've got to have this job. Uh -huh. I've got to take care of it. You know? yeah. That's right. But God's 
saying. If you'll put that in my hands, yeah. I'll take better care of you than you ever can. That's it. Yeah. 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 The one that protects us yeah. and protects what we have yeah. once we get it. Exactly. exactly. I've had it for years. I've had the devil tell me. And everything you got, everything you've done, God's going to just take it away from me. He'll take it every bit away from me. I said, so? He gave it to me once, he'll give it to me again. And if you don't, he'll give me something. I'm not worried about it. One of the greatest lessons I ever learned was to take my hands off. If God yeah. wants it, he can have it. He gave it. He gave it back. He gave it to me in the first place. Exactly. But we get, we get this entitlement in our mind that says, this is mine and I've done this. Yeah. Right. There again, me and the devil have all kinds of talks because he tries to come up and mess with my head all the time. Right. And I tell you, I said, you're stupid. Leave me alone. Yeah. Shut up your life. Go away. Yeah. Right. You're a liar. You couldn't tell the truth standing on the Bible. That's right. Just leave me alone. I'm going somewhere. Yeah. But I was back right there not long ago, and I was going to be there, and he tried to be and I looked and I said, <laughs> I said, okay, Lord, I said, here's the thing. I thank you for allowing me to use this land that I've got right here. It's not mine. It belongs to God. Yeah. Because God is the, the owner of the cattle of a thousand hills. Yeah. He created this old rock. <laughs> he created this earth that we're on. Right. He still owns it. He ain't gave it away. It's his. Yeah. Nothing on this earth is mine. He's allowed me to use it or allowed yeah. me to possess it, but that don't mean it's mine. That's right. It still belongs to him. Amen. Amen. So, there again, the storms. That's a storm that I have a lot in my mind. The devil comes in and tries to, tries to convince me that things are going to happen. Yeah. He's tried, I don't know how many times. And this one, this one hurts me about as bad as any of them. Actually, probably worse than anything else. He'll try his best to make me believe he's going to take, that God's going to take my wife away from me. Huh? Now, I just tell him, I said, no. He's not. Man. But if she does go, I'm not worried about now because I know where she's going. Yeah. I know where she's going. Amen. And then he'll try to hit. Yeah, he tries them all. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh -uh. Because I can't worry myself about that. that that's a storm that I have no control over. I could worry myself to death about that stuff. I could grieve myself in an early day right. over something that has never even happened. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Huh? Exactly. He prayed every day for his kids to, to, to be saved and to be alive. Yeah. And that was the first one, one of the first things that death had to work from. The storms are going to come. That's right. But we just got to understand that the blessing coming out to the end. Amen. That's right. Let's see. Whenever you touch on private life, when this right here fall under this, um, I have a very close friend that I'm, I'm was close to, and close to no more. But he built a name for himself. He was, um, he, he even, Built up part of the rep, rep, let's see, uh, reputation, and so he was using. Uh, he was uh, used to different parts of the church, more for financial part of, it. and because he was able to, because he had. It. Yeah. But eventually, something that happened way back in when come to the surface. But he was still he was still in church and everything, and he lost it all. And uh, they even had to sell off because of what he built up. Yeah. 
And I got thinking about that. I said, we're never too good. Things can never be taken away from us. Because we think that we got such a good name that we're we're so oh look what I've done, look what look what I've got, look at look at the things that I've accomplished. Yeah. And then all of a sudden stroke the night, just things, bam, 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 just things started disappearing mm-hmm. overnight. Yeah. And he had as far as I know the house in the day is worth like one point some million dollars yeah. on the land he sits on. And they had to sell off to keep them losing everything. Yeah. Well, it's it's no different than what the Lord told us that her. That man, real rich man, had all that money. He said, mm. he said, I've done so well. I've built myself up so much. I've got so much. I think I'll tear down these barns and build new. New, yeah. And the Lord said, Thou fool, thou require thee this night, thou, thou soul, uh-huh. thou life. I want to. And he died. Yeah. We can't ever, and that's where I was. That's where I was thinking. That's where my mind went on this pride of life. Was the insurance in one's own life. That means we're so sure of ourselves. We've done all this and this is what's going to happen. It can all be gone. How many people out on the streets? There's a lot of folks you hear stories. Folks used to have big, you know, six figure paying jobs. Had all kinds of stuff. And then the turn of events come in and they end up now they're living in a cardboard box under a bridge. Uh-huh. And you think, oh, them folks, they just wouldn't work. No. It's because something happened. Now, some of them wouldn't work. But some of them was. Right. And just life rained down a storm on them and they lost everything that they had. I know a lot, I, I went off there a little bit, but I, I wanted just to see that. That's good. He said back in the 30s, in the Great Depression, that never could have went down, that people literally jumped out of windows. Yeah. Because they lost everything, they knew they lost everything that they had. Mm-hmm. It just was, to them it wasn't worth mm-hmm. living or worth they couldn't have what they had. They couldn't, they couldn't have them. Mm-hmm. So they just jumped out and took their life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of those, well, I, I remember hearing that too, a lot of those, they said were family, you know, men and family men, they now all of a sudden they've been able to provide for their family and they got several kids going back to Thursday. They had a lot more kids and folks didn't have any. And now all of a sudden they have no way to be able to pay for the, the life that they had given them kids and that life before and then so they feel like they got no thing. You know, they they, they just couldn't handle it. That's a that's a bad state of affair. I know I heard a story about a man that went to Las Vegas and he went there with two thousand dollars on the gamble. He lost his two thousand dollars, but the bug hit him, and he went back and cashed in his credit cards. Gambled out like twenty something thousand dollars worth of money off credit cards. Then he ended up uh, did a some kind of a mortgage or something against his house, borrowed money against his property. He lost everything. His wife and kids was in the casino in the hotel. He left the casino with no money, no house, nothing but the clothes on his back and all he left that he had left. He walked out and got his car, got his glove box, took out a pistol and loaded the ground. Mm-hmm. Why are we talking about this? Because you can't let the storm make you think that it's hopeless. Paul, I'm sure, thought it was hopeless until that angel came. Uh 
And you think, no, that's Paul talking about. He was a super Christian. He was a, you know, he was a, he was a superman God. No, he was a poor little old ugly fellow with a built teeth. Yes. <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah. Paul was not pretty. He, he found out that in history. He was not a pretty little fellow. He was a little bit there. He was a tent maker. What must look at? Bob, Bob, Bob said he, he was an uh, easy eye. Whatever it was. He talked about that. Tender eye. Tender eye. Yeah. Paul was tender eye too. <laughs> <laughs> but poor old Paul, it wasn't that he was super Christian and all that. He had faith. But I'm sure, I don't care how spiritual you are. When a certain amount of activity goes on in your life, you're going to need a word from the Lord. Amen. It gets to the point where it just, uh, you know, the dust and dust. But folks, there's a blessing. If you'll just endure the storm, Amen. there's Amen. a blessing coming. Amen. And it may be multiple blessings. Not just for us, but for everybody that we come in contact with and want to come out of the storm. Right. There's no telling who God's going to use us to help or to heal Amen. or to bring to salvation. Yeah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Any other comment? Question? Y'all quiet, listen. I'm not kidding. I'll get y'all here for a long time. <laughs> Good lesson, Pastor. Thank you. Because sometimes we just forget what what all God has done, and even all the storms He's brought us through. And sometimes we say, "Well, God, you got to do this." You know, I went through this. I got. I want something out of this. Mm -hmm. But it ain't that way. It might be something. It might be a learning experience that we had to. Learn. It might be something that God is wanting to do for us, but we had to go through that trial in order for us to learn something yeah. in that trial. But then again, it could be that He's taking you through something so that you'll be strong enough to hang in there and do what needs to be done when He gets you to that spot. Amen. Uh, huh? Amen. Yeah. yeah. And that and what you're going through may not even be for you at all. It may be for somebody well, else. For others is dead. Yeah. It may be for others is dead. It may be for somebody else. It needs a blessing. It needs a healing. Right. It needs a, a hand laid on. Mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and finish the story. <laughs> we met Sister, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We met them up there today. There were three ladies. I was sitting in the truck waiting for Sister Melody and Sister Sean to go in and pay a dollar and get us some, get them some Valentine's candy for school tomorrow. And I, was, I felt something moving in the mirror. And I looked back in the mirror and I see three women back here. I looked and I said, well, look, one of them is dog. And I looked and I said, well, there's a couple of them back up. I said, what are they doing? <laughs> and about that time, I seen this little short lady standing up on a on, uh, load reach trying to break the car and you know, break the load off the wheel. I said, oh, they got a flat. So I thought, well, I, said, I guess I'm out of fine. I said, I just went in my truck and I'm back here. I got out and I said, I bet y'all need some help. I said, oh, yeah. I changed the tire. I didn't have time. It was, it was about 4 30. But I said, well, I need help. It don't matter about my time. Lord, give me what I need tonight. So, I went on. And I already knew that I was thinking on this first John anyway. But if I had not went through breaking my knuckles up and working my arm out until it felt like it was going to fall off down on the knees, if I hadn't went through that, 
and I might not have been able to find out that this, this sister needed prayer. We wouldn't have been able to pray for her standing there in the parking lot of family dollar. Who else watched and seen us praying for this woman while we were standing in the middle of the parking lot praying out loud for a woman's evening? That's right. Amen. Amen. We never know right. what God's bringing us through so He can use us. That's right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Anybody? Let's stand together tonight, Tim. Hallelujah. Just remember, your blessings come. Amen. It's coming. Lord Jesus, we love you tonight. I'm so thankful, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Lord, they're saying that there's ice coming, that there's freezing rain, that the possibility is coming. I want to ask you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, to not let there be any damage, to not let there be any loss of life. Lord, we'd really appreciate it if we could not lose our electricity and that we could keep heat. Lord, we ask you to just please keep your hand of protection upon us. Keep your hand of protection on this county, Lord, and on this state. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we claim every promise that you have in your word. In the name of Jesus, keep protect us, Lord, now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Two of them. I, I, had, I had everybody to see this. Oh, yeah. yeah. The kids, you were up here doing piano lessons, the day the kids messing with Brother Filter's tambourine. No. No, we're just going to play the piano. Okay. <laughs> In Jesus' name, it'll show up. Yeah. Yeah. It's about here tonight, yeah. yeah.